Okay, so we're going to start again um, with some review to get ourselves warmed up here. So we're going to start with a multiplication problem. So please get out your scrap paper or your, maybe you're keeping all of these review problems on a, you know, in an organized way. That would be great. I'm trying to start every session with some review problems. So it would be great if you um, could do that. I see that it's a little hard to see there. I think you can see the numbers now. Okay. So I'm going to multiply this matrix right here times this one right here. I'm going to multiply these. So remember, my rule for multiplication is, first of all, I have to check the dimensions. So the dimensions of this matrix, two rows, three columns. The dimensions of this matrix, three rows, two columns. Now notice those dimensions are not the same. These two matrices could not be added, but they can be multiplied because these two match, and that's the rule. So since I have a match, I am going to go ahead and multiply, and my answer will be a 2 by 2. My answer is these dimensions. So when I go to multiply, I keep in mind that the spots I'm filling over here, this is first row, first column, first row, second column, um, second row, first column, and second row, second column. Now I'm going to fill these spots. So here we go. If I'm going to fill the first row, first column, I am going to take the numbers in the first row, which are 1, 2, 3, and I'm going to multiply them by the numbers in the first column, which are 1, 3, 6. Now I'm going to multiply each set and add that up. So I am adding 1 and 6 and 18. So 1 and 6 is 7, and 7 and 18 is 25. Okay. Now, I'm going to come over here, and I want the first row, but now I need the second column. So I'll go ahead and write down my 1, 2, and 3 again. But this time, I'll pair them up with 4, 2, and 0. So I multiply each set and add them all up. So I have a 4, and a 4, and a 0. So that makes an 8. Now I'm going to go down to my second row. So now I'm going to be using the numbers negative 1, 1, and 4. Negative 1, 1, and 4. Now I'm going to pair them up with the first column. 1, 3, 6. So I have negative 1. I'll write it up here because it's running off. Negative 1 plus 3 plus 24. So negative 1, 3, and 24. So let's see, what is that? 26. And then I'm going to take my negative 1, 1, 4 right here, my second row, and I'm going to multiply it by my second column, 4, 2, 0. So I pair them up, multiply each pair, and then add. So that's going to give me uh, negative 4 and 2 and 0. So negative 2, and that is the answer to the multiplication problem. Now again, if any of that went too fast for you or you're not sure about any of it, just rewind, play it again. Okay, next review problem. Now we're going to find the inverse of a matrix. So matrix A is negative 1, 5, 4, 2, and we're going to find the inverse. Now, 
keep in mind that the inverse, oopsie, the inverse is a new matrix. And there's two steps to finding it. So what are the two steps to finding the inverse? Do you remember? Did this yesterday. What are the two steps? Step one, we need to find the determinant. So remember when we find the determinant, we start right here and we multiply negative one times two, negative one times two. We multiply four times five. So negative one times two, four times five, and then we subtract those. So that's gonna give me negative two minus 20, so negative 22. So the value of my determinant is negative 22. Now, the second step is I make a new matrix. And my new matrix is found very easily. I don't even need to do any math. I just need to remember the procedure. I take these two guys and I switch their places. So the two goes here and the negative one goes here. They just flip flop. And then this guy changes to a negative four and that guy changes to a negative five. Whatever these are, positive or negative, they go the other way. So positives become negatives, negatives become positives on these spots. These spots switch places. So then I take this new matrix that I just built, and I divide all of these numbers by my determinant. So I'm going to divide all these numbers by negative 22. And then when I write my answer in the answer blank, I'm going to simplify. So this one reduces to negative 1 over 11. Remember in a fraction, the negative can go on the top or the bottom. It doesn't matter. Here the negatives cancel. Here we can reduce to a positive 2 elevenths and a positive 1 22nd. And that is the inverse. Hopefully that's ringing some bells from yesterday. All right, one more review problem and then we're going to go to a couple of new things today. The other, the last review problem we have is we're going to find the determinant of A three by three. So we're going to find the determinant of this matrix. So do you remember how that works? To find the determinant of a three by three, we take the first two columns. So right here, look where I'm pointing. We take three, two, negative one, and then we take one, zero, five. So this column and this column get reproduced over here. And then we multiply along that diagonal. So everything there gets times together, that's just zero. Everything here gets times together, so that's negative three. And everything here gets times together, so that is 40. Now total that up, add that up, we get 37. So we multiplied, 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 and added them up. Same thing the other way, multiply, zero. Multiply, um, 45. Multiply, negative four. And add those up, um, 41. Then to get the final answer, you take the first number you got and subtract the second number. So 37 minus 41 is negative 4. So the answer to that is negative 4. So now we have um, the answer to that problem. Okay? All right, let's get our notes back out. Now we're going to um, 7.3. So at the top it says page 46, we're at 7.3 where it says use your calculator to solve the following. 
So we're going to talk about how to use our calculator to solve the following matrices. Now, I'm not going to write down, I, I'm obviously using a smaller board than I'm used to, so I'm not going to write down the problem that would take up too much space, and you have it right in front of you. But what I do want you to write down on your paper is a matrix. We are going to write the numbers that are in the equations, we're going to write them in the matrix. So we're going to write 1, 1, negative 1, 2. So if you think this is x, y, z, and then there's equals a number. Okay? So the top equation is 1, 1, negative 1, 2. The next equation would be 2, negative 1, 3, 14. And the bottom equation would be 3, 1, 1, 14. Okay, so let everybody stop a minute. Make sure you understand that you got the X numbers all lined up here. 1, 2, 3, just the coefficients. Please don't put any variables in there. Just the coefficients. Then we got 1, negative 1, 1. There are Ys. And our Zs are negative 1, 3, 1. And then our numbers are over here. The things that the equations equal are over here. Is that okay with everybody? All right, now we're going to get our calculators out. Here's my calculator. I'm going to turn it on. Okay, so I'm going to give you a minute to get your calculator out and get it turned on. Okay, we're looking at a nice little home screen that looks like this. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that matrix that's on the board, that's on your paper, I'm going to put that matrix into my calculator. Okay, now how is that going to work? Well, let me try to do this so you can see it. I'm going to, first of all, notice that right over here, see where I'm pointing? I know the focus isn't going to be too good, but look where I'm pointing. Look on your calculator, and you'll see the word matrix written above that button. So I'm going to press second that button, and it's going to pull up the matrix menu, which looks like this. Now, I'm going to click across to edit because I am going to put some data into my calculator and I use edit to do that. Okay, so I click across to edit and then I'm just going to press enter. Now the calculator says to me, okay, and I don't know exactly what numbers you're going to have here, but it doesn't matter. The calculator wants you to put in the dimensions of the matrix that you're going to be working with. So the dimensions of the matrix we're working with, take a look at it, how many rows? Three. How many columns? Four. So we're going to put in, up here where it's flashing, we're just going to put three, and then we're going to put enter, and then we're going to put four, and we're going to put enter. And then what the calculator has done is it has established spots now for you to put numbers in. So you're just going to start putting in the numbers that you have written on your paper or that I have written on the board. We're just going to start putting them in. So I put in one and I press enter and then notice it clicks over to the next spot, which is also a one. Whoops. And then I'll press enter and it'll click me over and then I'll put in negative one. And remember when I put in negatives, I have to use my negative button down here. Please pay attention. Don't use the minus sign. We put in the negative. And then I press enter. And then I put in my two. Then when I press enter, notice it brings me down to the next row. So now I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to put in the next row. So two, negative one, three, 14. And then I'm ready for the third row, 3, 1, 1, 14. And now I have the entire matrix put in. So as soon as you get that last number put in, so that you have all your numbers in the, the calculator now, press Enter. Okay, so I have pressed Enter. So I'm sitting here 
Everything is in. Okay, now I want you to come up here and I want you to press second quit. That will take you back to the home screen. Now go back into matrix. So press second matrix again. Okay, now we're back to where we were before, only now you see we have our matrix in, a nice little three by four matrix is put in. Okay, well before when we were here, do you remember we clicked all the way across to edit? Well now we're going to click across just once, we're going to go over to math. This is what allows you to do tons of different things to your matrix. Just FYI, notice what the very first entry is. DET, guess what that stands for? determinant. So you know all the work that we've been doing by hand, like the review problem that we just did? Your calculator will actually do all that for you. But we don't care about that right now. Now we're going to click all the way down using your arrows. We're going to click all the way down until we find the one that says RREF. RREF. Okay? As soon as you get there, press enter. It will put that on the screen. Then one more time, go back into matrix. Notice that A is highlighted. That's our matrix, so we're just gonna press enter. And now the calculator says R-R-E-F-A. Press enter one more time. And notice what pops up. What pops up is a new matrix that looks like this. Now, set the calculator aside because now it's up to you to figure out what in the heck is going on. This is actually an amazing thing. Your calculator has just taken this system of equations and it has done elimination, the process of elimination, and it has eliminated a whole bunch of stuff so that now you can tell exactly what the answer is. Remember in the beginning, this column represented the X's, this was the Y's, this was the Z's, right? So I want you to look at that top row. You have an X, but there's no Y's and Z's. So that top row literally says X equals four because there's no Y's or Z's in there. So it's like this equation, but this part's gone. Then what about the middle one? There's no X and no Z. There's like the equals here. This says Y equals zero. And then the bottom one, there's no X's or Y's, says Z equals two. So basically, gang, this right here is the answer to the system. When we write our answer, we do it just like we did before, only now we have three variables. So it's four comma zero comma two. If you went back to your original system of equations that we had on the paper, if you went back and you plugged in 4, 0, and 2 for all of the x, y's, and z's, you could check to see that that is indeed the solution to the system. Wow, isn't that pretty darn amazing? Okay, so let's try the next one. Okay, so now for the next one. Again, I'm not going to recopy the problem. I don't have room to do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and recopy or, or go straight to the matrix. So when I take my paper, I'm looking now at this problem right here, problem two. I'm going to take all the numbers and write them down. So I have a one, a four, a negative two, and a zero. So these are my X's, Y's, and Z's, and then my equals number. And then 2116 and negative 3, 3, negative 5, negative 13. So, you okay so far? Now, you don't have to do anything now except press some buttons. 
and ultimately, I'm gonna go ahead and write the button I'm gonna press right there, but I can't press that button until I do what? I have to get all of these numbers into my calculator. Alrighty, so I'm gonna go back through this one more time, and then if you have trouble remembering the steps, um, you wanna go back and redo these first two problems a couple of times. Because going forward, I'm going to do, go through this step by step again one more time, but then I won't be doing that for the following problems. But let's do it again. Start right from the very beginning. Okay, so I have my calculator just like it was um, before. I and mean, this is the last thing that happened. So I'm going to go into my matrix menu. So I press second matrix and it pulls this up for me. I click across to edit and press enter and it says to me okay how big a matrix do you want to put in well isn't this matrix the same size as the other one doesn't it have three rows and four columns three rows rows of the bleachers four columns of the White House yeah so it's all it's good it's okay but I'm gonna go ahead and press it in anyway I'm gonna say three enter four enter and now I've opened up all these spots and you'll say oh but Mrs. Ford they've already got numbers in them yeah that's okay just type in the new numbers okay don't worry about it. type in the new ones so we're going to type in one four negative two zero so I'm typing in my top row so I'm going to type in one enter four enter negative two and notice negative two enter zero enter so now I've got my first row in now I'm going to type in the new row two enter one enter one enter six enter so now I've got my next row in and then finally negative three enter three enter negative five enter negative thirteen enter and as soon as I press enter that last time so I put in negative 13 and I press enter. As soon as I do that, I'm going to second quit because now I am done putting numbers into the calculator, okay? Now, if that stuff left over from the last problem ever bothers you, just press clear, it's gone. You don't have to worry about it. It won't hurt a thing, but if it bothers you, you can always just press clear. Now. The matrix for the problem is in my calculator. At this point, I need to RREF it so that I can see what the answer is. By the way, RREF stands for Reduced Row Echelon Form. We're not gonna go into all of that, but that's what it stands for. It is a real live thing. Um, it stands for reduced or echelon form. All right, so now I'm going to go back into my matrix menu. So here we go, second matrix. Remember, edit is where I put numbers in. Math is where I do things with them. So I'm going to click over to math, and then i got to go all the way down to RREF. Okay, and then I'll press Enter. So now the calculator says, okay, you want me to RREF, what do you want me to RREF? Well, go back into matrix, second matrix, and I want it to RREF matrix A. So I'll press enter, and then I'll press enter again. And up comes my new matrix. So I'm gonna write that down on my paper. So my new matrix is 1003. 0, 1, 0, negative 0.5, and 0, 0, 1, 0.5. So now I'm ready to write my answer. The calculator has done all of the eliminating, it's done the elimination process for me. All I have to do is write down the answer. So the answer is, like there it is, 3, negative 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So what that means, gang, is that X is 3, 
y is negative 0.5 and z is 0.5. Okay? Easy peasy. All right, so now we're ready to try number three. I'm going to go through this one a little bit faster. Um, so again, if you forgot or need those step-by-step -step instructions again, um, go back and watch the first two examples again until you get the hang of what you press and when. All right, but here we go. Um, you're thinking to yourself, gosh, Mrs. Ford, there really isn't much work to show. And you are right. All you have to show, when we get around to taking a test or something over this, all you have to show is exactly what I am writing right now. So you are going to show the matrix that's going in, which for problem number three is one, negative one, one, zero, two, oh gosh, zero, negative three, negative one. Did you catch that, gang? In problem number three, the second equation does not have a y. So when you build your matrix, you have to put a zero in that spot. Remember, x, y, and z. Make sure you put a zero in that spot. And then negative one, negative one, two, and negative one. So at this point, all you have done is you have put in your matrix numbers. You have just put in the numbers from the equation we don't put in the X's, Y's, and Z's. I mean, you can write up above if you want. That kind of helps you stay organized. But they don't have any place um, in, the, in the calculator for sure. All right. Now, you've written down the matrix. That's required. You've said, okay, I'm going to get a new matrix now using my REF button. And now the only thing left to do is to type it in and get the new matrix. So, remember what we do. I'm going to go ahead and clear that out so it doesn't make anybody nervous. Okay, and then I'm going to go to second matrix. I'm going to click across to edit, press enter. It's asking me how big my matrix is. This is another three by four, so I'll just hit, hit three enter, four enter. And now it's saying, okay, give me the numbers. Do not worry about the numbers that are already in there. Just type over them. So one, negative one, one, zero, two, zero, negative three, negative one, negative one, negative one, two, negative one. After you get that last number in, press enter. I have pressed enter, everything's in, calculator remembers it all, so now I'm going to press second quit. And then I'm going to go back into matrix, second matrix. If I'm putting in a new matrix, I go over to edit, but I'm not, I already put it in. So now I'm going to math, so over to math, and then down, 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 down to R-R-E-F, make sure you're getting R-R-E-F, enter. It won't R-R-E-F, nothing. You have to give it something to R-R-E-F, reduced row echelon form. So we want to put matrix A, so we're going to do second matrix, right there's A, enter. Now it says I'm going to put matrix A in reduced row echelon form, and there it has. So I don't know, it's kind of hard to see. Hope you can see that. I'll write it down. That's what you need to do. You need to write down what it says. One, zero, zero, one. Zero, one, zero, two. Zero, zero, one, one. And then you have to recognize that that actually is your answer. That top row actually says what? It says X equals zero. This is the X row, or X column, remember? So X, there's no Y and Z, so X is one. Y is two, Z is one. And there is the solution to the system of equations. Okay. All right, let's look at the next one. Now, 
if you look at the next one, your heart might be skipping a beat. Because what he knows about it. Oh my gosh, it's got double hues in it. No reason to freak out. This just means our matrix is going to be a little bit bigger. We're going to do everything exactly the same. Hopefully, I can get it all on here. Now, I want you to be very, very careful and get yourself organized right from the start. When you put in your um, equations, you're going to have four variables. It doesn't matter to me what order you put them in but it has to be the same for each equation. So I'm going to stick with alphabetical order. So I'm going to put my equations in, putting the W, X, Y, Z, and then the equals number over at the, the end. Okay? So what that means is, if I am missing anything, if I am missing anything, it has to go in as a zero. So in the top equation, I do not have a W. I have an X, a Y, a Z equals four. So again, the order that you put things in doesn't matter. But whatever order you put them in, you have to be consistent. And that is the order that they will come out over here. So I'm putting mine in in alphabetical order because that makes sense to my brain. Now, the next equation, equation two, there's a W and there's a Y, but there isn't anything else and it equals negative four. Now I need you to look really carefully at that equation, gang. Do you see what I'm talking about? There's a one W, there's a one Y. There's equals negative four, but there is no mention of X and no mention of Z. The third equation, no W, I have an X, I have a negative one Y, I have no Z and it equals one. And the bottom equation, things are out of order, please pay attention. There's a W, there's an X, there's no y, but there's a z, and it equals 1. So these are super simple because the calculator does all the work, but you have to be extremely careful when you're writing your matrix that you have every letter lined up in the right spot. So again, for example, the last equation, it has a 1w, it has a 1x, it has a 1z, but it does not have a Y. And the whole shebang equals one. Over here goes the equals number. Okay, now it's ready to go. So I go back to my calculator. All right, so here I am, I'm going back to my calculator, second matrix. I'm gonna put some numbers in, so I'm gonna click across to edit. Now the first thing it says to me is, how big a matrix you putting in here? Well, it's a little bigger this time, isn't it? How many rows do we have? Four. How many columns do we have? Five. So this is a four, enter, five, enter. Oops, sorry. This is a four by five. So I put in a four and a five. Now I'm gonna start typing in the numbers. I'm not gonna do that on screen. I'm just gonna type in the numbers. I'm gonna type in all the numbers from this matrix. So. I'll, I'll be quiet so you can type them in. After you have the last one typed in, remember after you put in this last one right here, and you press enter, press enter, then you're done putting in the matrix. So then we go to second quit. We just want to get out of that so that we can go back in and do something different. 
So we go back into second matrix. We click across to math and down. Whoop, too far. And then second matrix A, which is my four by five now, and enter. So what I came up with And hopefully what you came up with is this. And lo and behold, friends, that is the answer to the question. So all you have to do now Remember, this is all you have to write down. The calculator does it all. This is all you have to write down. So then we're just going to put down the answer, which has four parts this time. So it's W. Remember, we did W, X, Y, Z when we put it in. So the answers come out in that order. So 4.5, 3.5, and 4. If you by chance went rogue and put in your equations in a different order, you would have gotten exactly the same answers as I did, but they would have come out in a different order. It doesn't matter what order you do the equation. X is going to be 4.5. So whether X is written here or here or here is irrelevant. X is 4.5. Y is 3.5. Okay. Well, we got one more to go on this page. So here we go. Hopefully at this point you're getting really, really good at this. So again, all we have to write down is the matrix that goes in. So if I'm doing X, Y, Z, it's going to be 1, 1, 1, negative 3. Watch it, got second, we got a problem. So four, negative one, zero, negative five, there's no Z. Negative three, two, one, four. I always take a minute, make sure I copy it right too. I'm hoping that I copied it right. Obviously, if you type the wrong thing in on the calculator, the calculator will give you the wrong answer. Okay, so here I am. I don't want all that junk on there, so I'm just going to hit clear. Now I have my nice home screen. So you remember what you do now? You go to second matrix. Click across to edit. Hit enter. Now how big is the matrix we're putting in this time? Yeah, we're back to a 3 by 4 so make sure you put in 3, enter, 4, enter. You always have to start by telling the calculator how big you want to put in. Then here we go. One, one, one. Oh, I'll be quiet to not bother you. When you get them all in, Remember, you could put in that last number, that, that 4 there, and you press Enter. And then you press um, Second Quit. And then we go back into Matrix, across to Math, down to RREF. So there I am, down to RREF, press Enter. And then I go back into Matrix. I want A, which is highlighted, hit enter, and enter, and oh boy, oh boy, we need to talk about this, because this is a problem.
now, I don't know if you paid much attention, but if you go back, if you've been writing all this down on your note sheets, if you go back and look, every single problem that we've done up to this point has had a final matrix that looked something like this. Now I'm making up, I'm making up these numbers, but look, this part of it has been pretty darn consistent on all of the problems we've done up to this point. And that's key, guys, because the equations are supposed to give you the values of the variables. So this is supposed to say 1x, no y's or z's, equals 6. 1y, no x or z, equal 5. So this is supposed to tell you that your answer is 654. Now, I want you to look at what happened on this set of equations. That is very bad because if we translate that, it says no x's, no y's, no z's add up to 1. That is literally what this equation says. Can it be that no X's, no Y's, no Z's add up to 1? Can that happen? No, because these are all zeros and zero doesn't equal 1. So what does that mean about these three equations? It means they don't intersect. There is no common solution for those three equations. So just when you thought everything was going to be super simple, we threw in this um, kind of, I don't know what, this issue. But again, it's not something for you to panic about. You just have to pay attention. Do your equations make sense? This makes perfectly good sense. Z equals 4. This does not make sense. Nothing can add up and equal 1. You can't have 0, 0, 0 adding up to 1. So you got to be on the lookout for that. But it's not a huge deal, and I have the ultimate confidence in you. Okay. Now we're going to spend a little bit of time with another method of solving equations called Kramer's Rule. So next page of your notes says use Kramer's rule. So we're going to solve this system. We're going to solve that system using Kramer's rule. I don't know. I'm hoping I can get it all on this board. Oh, you know what? I have another board. Hopefully I can get it all on this board. But if not, I can use a different one. So here's how this works. First thing I want you to do, step one, and try to keep track of these steps. Um, they're easy, but you have to remember what to do. So the first thing I want you to do is to make a determinant out of the coefficients. So these are the coefficients. So 2, 3, 3, negative 4. We're going to make a determinant out of those coefficients. Now, I'm going to shut up for a minute. I want you to evaluate that determinant. Can you evaluate that determinant? Do you remember what you're supposed to do? Guys, we've got to keep track of all this stuff. To evaluate this determinant, we take 2 times negative 4. We take 3 times 3, and we subtract them. So negative 8 minus 9. So the determinant is negative 17. Now, my answer, I'm solving this system. Before we did it with substitution or elimination, you know your answer is supposed to come out as an ordered pair. 
right? That negative 17 tells me that whatever my answer is, they're both, x and y, are both going to be over negative 17. So this de determinant right here becomes the denominator of my variables. Okay, how do we find the numerators? Well, that is actually pretty darn easy. To find the x numerator, we're going to make another determinant. Now remember, when you set this one up, these were the x numbers and these were the y numbers. Okay, if we're going to find the x numerator, because we're doing the x numerator, then we take out the x numbers and replace them with, you guessed it, these guys right here. So those are going to get glued right here. So I'm going to cut those out and glue them right here. So now I have a 1 and a 2, and then my 3 and negative 4. And I'm going to figure out what that is. So again, I am trying to find the numerator for my x and my y, because that's my solution, x comma y. To find the x, I take the 1 and the 2, the numbers over there, and I cut them out and glue them right here on top of the x's. So now I have this determinant. So I take 1 times negative 4, 3 times 2, and I subtract. So negative 4 minus 6, so that gives me negative 10. And then that negative 10 is the numerator of my x fraction. Alright, so now i got to find the numerator of my y fraction. So guess what I'm going to do? I bet you can guess. We're going to do exactly what we just did. We're going to make a new determinant. Only this time, the 1 and the 2 are going to get pasted on top of the y's because I'm solving for y. So I have my 2 and my 3. Those are my x's. And now these are getting glued right here. So I have my 1 and my 2. So I'm going to take 2 times 2 and 3 times 1 and subtract them. So that gives me 4 minus 3. That gives me 1. 1, then, is the numerator of my y. So the final answer, what I'm going to write down as the final answer, is 10 seventeenths comma negative 1 seventeenth. That is my final answer, because I have a negative over negative. I can cancel those. Nothing reduces. So this is the answer to the question. Now, you're thinking to yourself, good grief, why don't I just substitute or eliminate? Well, first of all, in the real world, you can. But second of all, I want to remind you that I've kind of spoiled you. With our substitution and elimination problems, we've got nice round numbers like x equals 2. So when you had to plug it back in, remember, when you find a variable, you have to plug it back in to solve for the other one. It's been easy. Well, if x is 10 seventeenths. To find y, boys and girls, you've got to plug in 10 seventeenths here and do all that arithmetic. Yucky, yucky, yucky. It is easier when fractions are involved, actually, to just use Kramer's rule. All right, let's try the next one. Remember, at any time, you can stop me, rewind me, Watch the whole thing again. If you know what you're doing, you can fast forward. Oh, the glories of video. All right, here's example B. Kramer's rule, problem B. We are going to use Kramer's rule to solve this system. Okay? So here we go. First thing, do you remember? First thing, you set up a determinant. 
of your x's and y's. So 1, 1, 2, negative 1. And you are going to evaluate that. So you multiply these two, that's negative 1. You multiply those two, that's 2. And then you subtract them. So the value of the determinant is negative 3. Negative 1 minus 2. That means that x is something over negative 3 and y is something over negative 3. Remember that the first de uh, determinant that you find, the coefficient determinant, is the denominator of your um, problem, your variables. All right, so now we're going to do the numerators. All right, so remember how that works. For x, you're going to use this determinant right here. Look what I'm going to use this determinant. But I am going to take these two numbers and plug them in in place of whichever variable I'm solving for. So if I am solving for x, I'm going to take the 7 and the 8, and I'm going to cut them out, and I'm going to glue them right here. Okay? So my new determinant is going to say 7, 8, 1, negative 1. These got pasted on right here. And then when I do y, I'm going to do exactly the same thing, but now when I glue them, I'm going to glue them here. So I'm going to have my 1, 2, and then my 7, 8. So the 7 and the 8 get cut out and pasted on top of whichever column represents the variable that you are solving for. So if you're figuring out x, then they go in place of x. If you're figuring out y, then they go in place of y. Okay, then you evaluate. So remember when you evaluate the determinant, you multiply, I get negative 7. You multiply, I get 8 and then I subtract. So negative 7 minus 8, that's negative 15. But it's over negative 3, so x equals 5. All right, y. 1 times 8, 2 times 7, and subtract. So it's 8 minus 14, that's negative 6, but it's over negative 3, so y is 2. So what do we write in the answer blank? We write 5, 2. That is the answer to the problem. x is 5, y is 2. All right, let's see how you do with the next two. And we'll be done for the day. Or well, though you can go back and rewatch if you want. So 3x minus 4y equals 9. And x plus 2y equals 2. This is problem C. Kramer's rule, letter C. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and find the determinant of my coefficients. So 3, negative 4, 1, 2. Those are my coefficients. These are my x's. 3 and 1 are my x's. Negative 4 and 2 are my y's. I'm going to evaluate that determinant. So that's going to be 6 minus negative 4. Now again, kids, you've got to know this. 6, negative 4, subtract them. So 6 minus negative 4. 6 minus negative 4. That becomes the denominator for both of my variables. So whatever x and y turn out to be, they're going to be over 10. Okay, now to find out what they are, I need to make two more determinants, just like this one. Only I will be using the 9 and the 2. So if I'm doing x, here's x. If I'm doing x, the 9 and the 2 go in for x. So 9 and 2 go here. These stay the same. Remember, you are cutting and pasting. So the 9 and 2 go here, that doesn't impact those. 
Similarly, when I do y, I'm cutting and pasting. So 3, 1, 9, and 2. All right, I don't have much room here. I'm going to try to squeeze it in. I do this determinant, so it's going to be 18 minus negative 8. So that's an 18. That's a negative 8. So I'm subtracting, and I get 26 over 10. So x is 13 fifths because I got 26, but it was divided by the 10, and that reduces to 13 fifths. Here, I get 6 minus 9, so that one is just negative 3 over 10. So 6 minus 9 is negative 3 over 10, and there is the answer to the problem. Remember when you evaluate a 2 by 2 determinant, you multiply these, you multiply those, and you subtract. So 6 minus 9. Remember, we write our answer as an ordered pair. Perfect. One more. Kramer's rule. One more. All right, here we go. Solving with Kramer's rule. So you ought to be able to do this pretty much by yourself. You're going to find the determinant of the coefficients, that is the x's and the y's. So 2, 7, negative 3, 1. Go ahead and figure out what that is. So 2 times 1, negative 3 times 7, but I subtract, so it's 2 minus negative 21, so that's going to be 23. Now, what do you do with the 23? It is the denominator of your answers. So whatever you end up with, it's going to be something over 23, comma, something over 23. All right, so here we go. How do we find the somethings? They go up here. Well, we use the 1 and the 8, don't we? If we're doing x, the 1 and the 8 get cut out and replaced right here right here in the x's. So we're going to put 1, 8, and then, of course, the 7, 1. And then when we do y, we'll do the same thing, but the 1 and 8 go here in the y spot. So 2, negative 3, 1, and 8. Now we evaluate 1 times 1 minus... 8 times 7. So I got negative 55 over 23. 1 minus 56. Here, I get 16 minus negative 3. 16 minus negative 3. So that's 19 20 thirds. So what goes in the answer blank? Negative 55 20 thirds comma, 19, 20 thirds. Now, again, I want to emphasize, you might think, oh, Kramer's real stupid, but keep in mind, that is a pretty ugly answer, but you didn't have to do anything with the fractions. You didn't need common denominators. You didn't need anything. The fractions happened, but they happened in an easy way, so you didn't have to actually work with them. So that's the beauty of Kramer's rule. You can get hideous, ugly, disastrous type answers, but it doesn't really matter because you're just making fractions out of them. Okay. All right. Thanks. Have a great day.